I'm Jeff Hyland. I'm a resident of Beverly Hills, and I'm the honoree this evening at the Robinson Gardens uh, annual event, Midnight in Paris tonight. And uh, as you can see behind me, the guests are arriving. And uh, what many of them don't know is that we're at the oldest estate in Beverly Hills, built in 1911. It is over 100 years old. It is seven acres and literally sits three blocks north of the Beverly Hills Hotel. The story told by Mrs. Robinson was that she and her husband, Harry Robinson, from the department store chain were driving by Beverly Hills when it was just five years old and they could literally see from downtown Los Angeles to the ocean and they said, this is paradise, we have to buy something. They paid $7,500 for the dirt and while the house you see behind me is not that large, it is the grounds which are so spectacular. This is it. She looked all the way out to the ocean and there was nothing but lima bean fields. There was no landscaping. Every single tree you see here they imported, they brought in, and that was the case for all of Beverly Hills. Burton Green was one of the co-founders of Beverly Hills. He was, along with uh, Canfield, uh, Whittier, uh, uh, Collis Huntington, these were the so-called founders or investors uh, in the establishment of Beverly Hills as a subdivision. So when they bought it, they were going to strike oil. There was no oil. All they found was water. <laughs> so they decided, let's turn this around and we'll make a subdivision, we'll make money out of it on the land, not under the land. And so one of the first things they did was they hired Mrs. Anderson and they had her come from the Hollywood Hotel and uh, she became the first proprietress of the Beverly Hills Hotel. That basically is what established the city and they decided that the best way that uh, they would sell the subdivision was by implanting these major estates right off the bat. So they uh, quickly established that the section south of Sunset uh, Boulevard would be the middle class and the wealthy class would live north of Sunset. And as you worked your way down south uh, toward the, the railroad tracks, which was the way you got from downtown Los Angeles to Santa Monica or the soldier's home because there was nothing in between, uh, this, was, this was to them the perfect spot. It was equal distance between the ocean and downtown Los Angeles. So if you were south of the railroad tracks, that was going to be the commercial section of Beverly Hills. And if you were south of Wilshire, then of course that was the working class. And if you were lucky enough to buy uh, north of San Monica Boulevard in what's called the flats of Beverly Hills, you could buy a lot for $900. And if you agreed to begin construction on your house within six months, they gave you a $300 discount. Uh, the city fathers were very astute in how they proceeded to develop out Beverly Hills. Burton Green was one of the co-founders of Beverly Hills, and he built the house next door to the Robinson Gardens. The only true neighbor when the Robinsons bought the estate was a hunting lodge directly behind the pool house. And eight years later, it became one of the most famous houses in the world when it was bought by Douglas Fairbanks Sr. and named Pickfair. Silsby Spaulding was our first mayor. He was from the Spaulding Sporty Goods family and he became the second owner of Gray Hall, was across the street from Pickfair. During the construction of Pickfair, Douglas Fairbanks had a tunnel installed so he could travel back and forth without anybody knowing. The, the Spaulding estate, uh, which sits on 52 acres, uh, is now two and a half acres and the balance of it are the 100 houses that you see in this photograph. The most moving estate for me was the 120-acre Colesman Estate in Benedict Canyon, just north of Harold Lloyd's estate. It ran from Benedict Canyon to Beverly Glen and was a hilltop that famed silent movie cowboy Fred Thompson and his screenwriter wife, Frances Marion, built. They hired the unknown architect, Wallace Neff, it was that home that enabled Wallace Neff to become a celebrity architect to Hollywood royalty. That is what put him on the map. Uh, and it was a short while later that he did Pickfair and the renovations for Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford. And this was the first Hollywood couple who divorced their spouses and married each other. 
and it became such a, an opening to Hollywood. And in that next nine years, Hollywood ruled Beverly Hills. It's there in a, in a new reincarnation. Uh, one of the previous owners had let the house uh, get run down and it really did have water damage, there was mold, there was, it was termite infested. So uh, when it was traded, uh, those people came in and basically rebuilt the house. You walk through it, the floor plan is the same, uh, it's, but it's still not the original pick fair that we all know. So it really is one of those houses that uh, in the legendary estates is, is in the section gone but not forgotten. Before the days of swimming pools, you either played tennis or you went horseback riding. So every estate, including a few south of Sunset, but major estates uh, above Sunset, all had their own stables. And you would ride your horse all the way up to Mulholland. There were 50 miles of trails. But when you, th you think about horses um, and you think about what this life was uh, 100 years ago, 80 years ago, uh, what the Doheny's had was really probably the top of the top. They would leave uh, their uh, Greystone mansion and they would be driven, uh, or they may even take horses from what is now Truesdale, where they had their stables, uh, across Coldwater uh, and up Coldwater Canyon, where the park is, beyond the reservoir, to the Doheny Ranch. And the ranch to this day is still there, the ranch house is still there, and that big three acre park in front is where they would sit enjoy drinks, libations, and they'd have uh, all kinds of barbecue. And by the time it was over and the sun had gone down, they went back, they were all so wasted that they just got on the horses and the horses knew the way back to the Doheny uh, estate. And uh, in those days, there was no traffic, there was no nothing. Those, those were the days.